Sundar one has experienced uh, this uh, a great impact due to change in salinity due to non availability of the fresh water. In 16th century, new tectonic shift took place, which resulted that the delta got uh, slightly downwards in the eastern part of the Sundarban, which is in currently in Bangladesh, and more this fresh more fresh water started flowing towards the Bangladesh. At that time, it was the same only. So, and less fresh water was available to the western Sundarban, which is now part of India. It impacted that low salinity tolerant species like Sundri started disappearing. Thereafter, during the development phase, when this lot of Ganga Ganges water, uh, this it is start, started getting diverted for uh, irrigation purpose and other uses for the mankind. So, very limited fresh water is now available to Indian Sundarban. Frankly speaking, on the Indian Sundarban. Only river Hooghly as well as river Rayamangal, which received the fresh water from uh, Ichamati river as well as some from the Bangladesh also. These have some element of fresh water and central Sundarban is nothing but the backwater of the sea where no fresh water is being received. Number one, frequent cyclones they are coming. The intensity may not be very big, but their frequency has increased. Number two, sea level rise is also reducing the availability of land in the forest as well as in the villages. And number three, due to climate change, sea surface temperature is also increasing. It means more salt is getting dissolved, salinity is increasing. All three are impacting the livelihood of the people. Because the cyclones, people lose their standing crops, they lose their property, they all of a sudden for some time, for few months, they become almost a climate refugee. When cyclone comes, sea water inundates the villages, it is a saline water. It means that thereafter crops cannot be raised. In the year 2009, uh, when the Isla came, we did a study and we found that even after one year of the cyclone, 23 percent of the agricultural land could not be cultivated. And we found out that a big percentage of that was going to forest areas for livelihood means so they were going for fishing mainly. So, it means more biotic pressure was on Indian Sundarban which is not a good thing. Low salinity loving mangroves they provide food to the herbivores. So, when the salinity is rising the uh, the uh, mangroves which love fresh water, their area is decreasing or their number is decreasing. It means that they are impacting the herbivore population, which in turn may impact directly adversely the tiger population in Indian Sundarban. That there is a practice in Indian Sundarban, which is known as the collection of uh, this. Uh, Penis monodon larva, mean dhora jake bola hai, means mean collection which is uh, supplied to the uh, this uh, prawn forms. So, what is happening that for the collection of this mean or larva, ladies and young children which, uh, which are school dropouts, they enter in Sundarban waters. So, it is doing lot of harm. Number one, education loss. Number two, it create, uh, creates a lot of uh, disease, skin diseases to them, diarrhea, dysentery, they are very common in, in this uh, Indian Sundarban due to the, the saline water which is highly infected in many, many places.
if mangrove shields are not there uh, in the sundarban coastal areas in that case the bay of bengal gales or cyclones which are which has become frequent due to climate change they may do far more damage to the mankind or the humans living in these areas that's why mangrove afforestation is very much essential we have to plant those species which can tolerate this high salinity which is prevailing now which is 8 to 30 ppt in currently in indian sundarban but on the side wise we have to go for climate adaptations models also the factors which are responsible for human wildlife conflict they also include include that this is a very difficult terrain that for a predator like tiger it's not easy to hunt tiger is a this uh, hunter which go for ambush it me it needs element of surprise which is very difficult because the moment tiger puts its paw this front paw in mud slash it makes sounds then it cannot rush to this run to catch the prey because nematophores may injure its paw so it means that catching a tie a prey base in indian sundarban is difficult if the population declines availability of prey will become more difficult so tigers they will not have any choice but to try to go to the village after crossing the river to get easy prey in the villages you have to remember sundarban is the only area in india or maybe in far more a south asian countries where cattle are not entering in the forest so easy prey which is available in other parts of the other forest of india is not available here in the year 2001 i joined and we realized we realized that holistic approach has to be taken one of the element was that we should take measures so that tiger do not come out number one how to improve the prey base so how to reduce the poaching of the animal so that more prey is available but even if some then some tigers they are trying to come out how to stop it so then this idea came to our mind that if we use it then it may help for two reasons number one the tiger cannot jump in marshy areas very high number two that all tigers are not determined to go to village area some of them go out in inadvertently so we started it initially there was resistance from our people even villagers they were reluctant to accept it because it was hindering their entry in the forest also so it means on one side it was trying to protect uh, to, to prevent tiger going to village and on the other side it was preventing people from going inside the forest so it was equally helpful it was very good for tiger reserve but we convinced the people we involved them in the management and now after 20 years we see that it is one of the most important tool to prevent tiger straying mm-hmm.